Kelsey, and I'm one of the coordinators of our ambassador program. This event, um, What to Expect at Wayne State, um, is what, uh, the third in our new series that we started um, so that we could reach out to everybody um, beforehand um, as prospective students. So um, I'll just start off with my own introduction. We have collected the questions that everybody submitted beforehand. And then if you have any questions at any time, feel free to drop them in the chat um, and get to them as we go. Um, because we recognize, you know, while we did get a lot of questions beforehand, um, you guys are all here now and we wanna get to your questions first. Um, so just to start off, like I said, my name is Claire. Um, I'm originally from San Francisco, California, but I did my undergrad at Miami University in Oxford, Ohio. Um, so I moved before, um, and then I ended up staying in the Midwest um, to come to Wayne State, just a couple hours north in Detroit. My major in undergrad was microbiology, um, and I chose Wayne State because I really love working in the community. I think that the service learning and the community engagement electives were big draws for me um, because I got to do so much hands-on experience in both clinical and outreach settings in my first and into my second year. Um, and then some other things I'm involved in besides the ambassador's program and the community engagement elective. I am the president of the military medicine interest group. I'm in the United States Army. And I also am on the board of the plant-based nutrition group. So that's a little bit about me. Hi everyone, my name is Roxanne and I'm also an M2. And so just a little about me, um, I am from Harper Woods, Michigan, which is just a, sub, uh, a suburb that's about 15 minutes away from Midtown Detroit. Um, I went to the University of Michigan and graduated in 2016. I had majors, or I had a major in neuroscience and a minor in Filipino. And then I, after that, I attended Wayne State's master's program in basic medical sciences, um, graduated in 2018, in the following year, apply for early decision uh, through the early decision program and started at Wayne last year. Uh, why Wayne State? Well, I'm kind of, I'm from the area. I was always really familiar with Wayne State. I had some relatives who were Wayne State grads, um, but I really loved their focus on community service as well as like serving the city of Detroit. Um, just as like it being my like second home. My dad worked for the DMC for like 40 years, and it was just. It was a school that I always looked at going to um, because of all the service they do here. Um, and the things I'm involved in at Wayne, I am obviously an ambassador for this. Um, I am a, a coordinator, or I am on the board of the street medicine clinic here. Um, I play viola and I'm in the Detroit Medical Orchestra, which is this medical orchestra with some Wayne State physicians that was founded um, that plays at the school. And I, I am a coordinator for the Children's Playroom, and we coordinate um, volunteers to volunteer at Children's Hospital, which of course isn't really happening due to COVID right now, but those are just a couple of things I'm involved in. Um, hi, I'm Ellie, and um, so I am, I'm from, uh, Ellen Park, Michigan, which again, is just 20 minutes away. It's outside the city of Detroit. And um, I actually went to Wayne State as an undergrad as well. And there I majored in biology. Um, the reason why I chose Wayne State is just because I absolutely loved it that it's the undergrad. I love being in the city of Detroit. It just, it was just felt it just felt so right and just I love the campus and again I really wanted to get as a doctor I really want to take care of people's health and I understand that health exists um, beyond just the uh, clinics and the hospitals it's in the community as well and so I feel Wayne State gives me the opportunity and the tools to actually go out there and make a difference and um, help uh, address the health issues that are in the community. Um, and so um, I'm only at M1 right now, and you know, it's in the middle of COVID right now, so I haven't really had much other opportunities um, to join other organizations yet, but I'm planning on doing it, but right now I'm just an ambassador. So thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Marwa. I'm also an M2 here, like Roxanne and Claire. Um, I am from Dearborn, Michigan, which is a 10 minute drive to campus. Um, I went to college at Harvard in Boston, and um, I studied chemistry and Arabic there. 
Um, so why Wayne? So I'm from the area and I got to experience life outside of home for four years, but I really wanted to come back. Um, and I consider Detroit my home. I was born in a Detroit hospital. I'm super close to it. And then the, the idea of community that has already been talked about earlier um, is something that was very powerful for me. Um, I graduated in 2017, but for two years before starting med school, I worked in the community at a nonprofit. And I really thought that, um, so this uh, organization also worked with Lane, so I already had that connection. Um, and I thought that uh, community work is really something that would keep me grounded throughout med school, throughout my career as a physician. So I really like um, Wayne State for that. On campus, some of the things I'm a part of are the cultural groups. So like there's a lot depending on what you feel um, your fit is. Um, so like the National Arab American Medical Association is something here. There's also religious groups. Um, I do mentoring programs. Um, so this is an ambassador program, but there's also an undergrad pre-med mentoring program. And then I've also volunteered with Make Your Date. Um, and you guys um, could hear more about that. It's not just Wayne State, it's an organization that helps um, uh, mothers bring their babies uh, full term. So that's healthy. So both the baby and the mother are healthy throughout the pregnancy. Um, and then I also am involved with Detroit Trauma Project. Yeah, thank you guys for joining us today. Hi, everyone. My name is Ariel. Um, I'm an M1 as well, like Ellie. I was born and raised in Detroit. Um, I attended Alcorn State University, which is a small HBCU in Mississippi. And then I graduated in 2017. I got my bachelor's in bio pre-med, moved back home. Um, I was able to be a scribe in the Henry Ford Health System. And then I actually just completed the post back program at Wayne uh, this past year. And I started med school this summer. Um, I chose Wayne because I wanted to give back to the community that like, you know, I was born in. And it's just like awesome just to be able to serve my community that gave me so much. And also, I just love the diverse network and the broad network of Wayne alumni that I've met. And it's just, it really, it's really family oriented and service oriented. And I just love that about Wayne. And some things that I'm involved in, I'm an MD ambassador. Um, I'm a part of the neurosurgery interest group. And um, I also volunteer for Gigi's Playhouse, which um, is services or it's like a tutoring program for, uh, children with disabilities. And then also I'm a part of the Black Medical Student Association. Thank you for joining us today as well. Hi everyone, my name is Grace and I am a second year medical student. I'm originally from San Diego, California and I've also lived in LA before. And for undergrad, I went to the University of Michigan and I was a major in biology. And I chose Wayne State because of the amazing clinical experiences, opportunities here at Wayne and also for all of the opportunities to engage with the community. And some things that I'm involved in here is that I am currently on the board for the Board of Student Organizations. That is an extension of the Student Senate that kind of oversees all matters related to student organizations. And I'm also doing the research elective. So I'm currently doing basic research at Scott Hall. So welcome. Awesome, thank you guys so much. So. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, now that you know a little bit more about us, um, we're also happy to answer any questions that are more specific to some of our involvements, um, but we'll just get started with um, some of those more open questions. Um, so for our first years that are joining us, um, there's a lot of questions, especially now with the changing environment and um, COVID-19. So um, obviously, as M2s, Roxanne, Marwa, Grace, and I, we can't really speak to the same experiences that Ellie and Ariel are having right now. So I'm going to hand it over to you guys for the next couple questions. Um, but um, the first question that I want to ask you is, how did you prepare for your first day as medical students, um, being that it was virtual? Um, okay, well, I guess I can answer. So I really, I, I'm just like, I made sure my laptop was working and I had all the Zoom links ready to go. I mean, that was really all I, you know, you could really do, but it, it was exciting though. I mean, I still like the day before I still like got, to, you know, dressed up. I got Wayne State. I took pictures for my mom and like, you know, just kind of tried to act like it was as much as the first day of school, even though it was virtual. And, you know, then, yeah, that's really all. I mean, just, go with the flow 
it just was a virtual school, but it was still the first day of school. Yeah, I agree with Ellie. I kind of like went to sleep early the night before, just kind of prepared myself mentally, even though it's virtual, it's still school. So try to get myself in that mindset, like, okay, school is starting in the morning. I got up early, made sure everything was working as far as my laptop was charged and everything like that. So. Awesome. And then um, the next question is just um, like, what's your typical weekly schedule as a first year student? And obviously, um, us M2s, we can speak later, but just for the first years, um, you guys can start us off. I'm okay, well, a typical schedule, I guess, would be I just look on like so the week before because things always change. I feel like they're always adding something in the calendar, like the day before or something like that. But right now, it's not too bad because it would just be like usually it's just like a Zoom meeting or something, so it's just like okay. Um, but so I check usually the week and then yeah, the, the night before, and I just make sure, like, see what classes they want me to cover, what lectures I should go over, and I just plan accordingly. And then I they have a really good on Canvas, I feel it's really we use this system called Canvas this and that's where the uh, professors they put all their uh, course materials and all the lectures and I feel it's very organized they tell us like the recommended days to watch them um, and so I try to follow along schedule um, so for the first part like up until like the end of August about we were um, completely online but now since we started the MSK unit uh, we've been actually been allowed to go to gross anatomy labs so uh, I've been going so I've been going to campus for gross anatomy labs and but that's just to, so I just will prepare for uh, what I'm doing that day. So either watching the pre-recorded lectures, going over the notes, or preparing for the gross anatomy lab. Yeah, same. I kind of just, uh, I start my week on Sundays. I make sure I look at Canvas uh, to see all the lectures we're supposed to cover that week, what meetings I have. Um, I'm very like organized. I'm a stickler. So I put everything in my Google Calendar. And then um, Usually, like, in the mornings, I watch my lecture videos, and then, you know, around, like, 11 noon-ish, we have our meetings, and then, like, now, like Ellie said, we're doing anatomy lab, so I will go to lab in the afternoon, and then after lab, that's when I get my studying done for the remainder of the day. So I just try to keep to that schedule and be organized, and then, like, weekend is catch up for any times that I, like, fell behind during the week. That's awesome. So I, for M2s, we pretty much have the same um, schedule. Um, it's very consistent now that we're done with Gross Anatomy Lab, um, I feel like. Um, so we have a Google Calendar with all of our um, lecture times, and I just fill it into my planner at the beginning of the week. Um, so that's kind of how I manage that. And then I look through, you know, if I'm using any additional resources if they match up with what I'm learning in lecture, and then I put that into my planner as well. So that's kind of how I plan my weeks. Um, and then for studying, this is kind of for everyone. Um, and then actually, we can get into the chat. I saw a question about street med before I forget. Um, Roxanne, do you want to talk about street med? Yeah, so one thing about Wayne is that there's just so many different clinics student-run clinics. Um, street Med is one of them that's focused um, more or focused on the homeless community, though a lot of different clinics treat kind of the same uh, or similar populations. Uh, street Med is focused. So we, um, we run clinics where we go into homeless shelters um, and then we give them medical care for free um, or we'll go to them in their homeless encampments and uh, provide them medication, provide them food things like that. Um, for M1, um, so usually this is a, it's a little different because of COVID, but normally we have the M1s uh, come in and take histories and then you can learn a lot from, we have preceptors and then we also have like M3s and M4s, they'll uh, kind of guide you to what you're supposed to do. So you can get involved in things like that right from the beginning. And then Marwa, I saw something about um, the NAAM. Yeah, so NAMA, the National Arab American Medical Associ Association, is a national organization. There are different chapters throughout the country, and the ones that the undergraduates and grad students, so those in medical school, 
can get involved with are called NextGen. Um, so there's a chapter at Wayne, I think they just started one at MSU and then throughout the um, state. And then basically through the organization, um, you could volunteer at clinics. So um, I know that um, Nama here at um, uh, Wayne State is involved with the CHIP clinic, which is, um, I don't know if any of you guys could, um, if any of you guys have volunteered there, but I think they do a lot of vision um, work at CHIP. And then there's also panels that you have with other professionals where you can network. There are scholarship opportunities. Um, there's a conference that they have every year. It happened earlier this year. I'm not sure with COVID if it's going to be happening next year. There's even um, a conference that happens worldwide. So last year, I believe it was in Lebanon. Um, but yeah, it's a really cool, a uh, group where you can just get involved with other people um, who have probably who could probably give you more guidance um, as an Arab American, um, just going through this med journey and then like choosing specialties. Um, yeah, if you have more questions, the website is just nama.com and they also have an Instagram and Facebook that you could follow. Awesome, thanks so much. Um, really quickly to address uh, the early decision program. So we're MD ambassadors. We're not affiliated with the admissions committee. So we don't make any of those decisions. Um, and a lot of that logistics is not um, information that we are privy to. Um, so Dawn Yarjo is on the call right now and she answered some of those questions in the chat. Um, and if you have any other questions, feel free to direct those to the admissions um, office because we unfortunately, um, we're students, we are just here to provide our perspective. Um, and so some of those questions that are more logistical um, about dates, um, we don't know those. So I'm really sorry about that, but if you have questions, um, feel free to shoot an email over there. Um, and then I saw a question about plants. I love plants. Um, so I'm actually the research coordinator for the plant-based nutrition group. Um, and for that, I basically just um, and working with all of our different board members at starting up projects um, to do more research in plant-based nutrition. Um, so right now, um, I guess would be a great time to talk about research. Um, <laughs> so I'm not in the research elective. I just do research on my own. Um, there are certainly plenty of people that do research through the research elective, um, and they, they can do basic science or clinical research, but for me, my PI, his name is Dr. Mills, and he's actually out of Alexandria, Virginia in DC. Um, and so I'm working with him on creating different surveys to um, address like uh, plant-based nutrition in different communities around the country um, as he goes to give his talks. So that's a little bit about what I do with the Plants Nutrition Group. We, um, we have a lot of different events and speakers that we try to correlate with the different units. So if we're in central nervous, we'll bring in um, a researcher who does whole foods plant-based and Parkinson's or something like that. So I hope that answers your question. Um, and then I guess, does anyone else, are y'all involved in research or the research elective? Grace, you mentioned being um, involved in basic science. Do you want to talk about that? Sure. So right now for me as a second year, the research elective, you can do either basic science research or clinical research. And it's super easy to find a PI, or it was last year. Not sure for COVID times, but I'm sure it's still easy because once you're a medical student, people are really open to you helping out with their research. So it's really easy to get research at Wayne. And I think I've heard for the first years, they're splitting the research elective so that it's now either clinical research or basic science research. Perhaps they can say something about that, but either way, it's super easy to get research here. For sure. Um, and then I think I missed a question um, earlier. Sorry, the chat is more than I can handle. Um, as M1s and M2s, looking back on your spring and summer before med school started, did you do anything specific to prepare yourself in the months before? Do you want me to read it again? Um, personally, I did absolutely nothing. <laughs> Uh, I always tell, I know that some people try to study, but personally, I always tell someone I can't recommend or not recommend studying beforehand. Like, I don't know. I, I wanted to go in kind of just at my most relaxed state. And I think honestly, the most you can do is kind of like try to mentally prepare yourself. Thank you, Roxanne. Sorry, Ariel. Um, just 
to piggyback off of Roxanne, I also, I was working full time. And then in March, um, I quit my job. I went traveling for a month, which is weird to say now that we're in a pandemic. Um, but I think the best way to prepare, at least for me, was to prepare my mental state, um, to prepare myself to get ready into the 40 hour work week again, but this time studying instead of being at a desk and working in the traditional sense. I was just going to add that my summer was kind of weird because I completed post back in June and started med school in July. So that whole like three or four weeks, I did absolutely nothing. I mentally prepared. <laughs> and um, yeah, I kind of just, you know, got everything organized together and just you just have to have a mental refresh so you can start fresh. <laughs> For sure. I um, can also speak a little bit about this. So I actually didn't get in until my last, I was a senior in college and it was my last month. So it was like the same week that I graduated. Um, I was notified that I was accepted. Um, so I already had a job. Um, I had onboarded um, back home and everything kind of switched. I had to get an apartment. So I wasn't really too worried about academics. I just more was trying to find a place to live and a roommate and get all those things in order because I didn't have a lot of time. Um, so that's kind of how I handled it. Um, I don't think I could have handled it any differently because I only had like 10 weeks. So just, you gotta take it as yourself. You know, whatever works for you in the past has gotten you to this point, it's gonna work for you in the future. So I think you just have to be consistent don't try anything big or new um, when you're moving across the country. If you're coming from California or if you're coming from Florida, you know, just stay steady. Um, so a question from James is, um, can you all speak to the things implemented in response to the nation's recent focus on the civil and social unrest? More specifically, how are URM and students of color supported at Wayne? I can talk. So um, <laughs> there's um, been a lot of change that has happened at Wayne um, in response to some of the events recently, um, especially because Detroit has been such a um, epicenter for COVID and for other um, social and political um, injustices like recently. Um, so um, there was a like a gathering, but it was, it was a socially distant gathering that DMC and like Wayne State, it was in the, I don't know what it's called, like the park. Um, and we all went with masks and um, had like eight, eight minutes of silence. Um, and that was more recently this summer. Um, there's been a lot of different um, initiatives that have been taken by different student groups. Um, and I think in terms of support, so I'm on the board of Latino Medical Student Association. And um, in terms of support from the university, we get a lot of support from the Office of Diversity and Inclusion um, in terms of expanding our network. And then also Latino Medical Student Association is a national group, kind of like what Marwa was saying um, about NAMA. So we get support kind of from both ends. I don't know if anyone else wants to speak on this. Um, yeah, I would like to speak. So I just really appreciate Wayne's being a person of color. I appreciate Wayne's uh, acknowledging the events that are going on. We always receive email from the administrations acknowledging the events. And then we also have a course called P4. Um, us as M1s, I believe we only had one or two sessions maybe, but they just, uh, they could kind of focus around different social determinants of health that we should be aware of in the communities that we serve. And then also for me personally, um, I was very appreciative. I was able to get um, like a excuse absence from class because I attended the National March on Washington in DC. And I was just very appreciative that Wayne was able to give me that excuse absence because that was a historical event that I felt necessary I wanted to attend. So. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing. Um, 
I'm just going back in the chat and trying to make sure that I answered all the questions and that we got to everything. Um, so I see a lot of questions about like class format and if we're required to attend. Um, so I guess if somebody wants to speak about maybe um, like how we view our classes, um, maybe how we communicate with professors and um, how do you organize your notes? Yeah, so um, I don't know. I used to, as an undergrad, I always went to class. I would, you know, I but I had a little bit more time. Now in medical school, there's, there's a lot to do. There's a lot to keep up with. Um, I, like I said, I started um, during COVID, so everything was online. And so I mostly, I plan, like even when they start doing in-person classes or whatever, I plan on actually keeping it online. I feel like it's just watch the classes online. You can do it on your own accord. You can plan your schedule more. As long as you stay on top of the material, I don't think that's, I don't think it, um, it if you're comfortable doing it online, I think that's great. It's a great way to save time. Um, and then you have time to do other things like volunteer. Uh, now, gross and annual labs, they are required. So I obviously go to those and I enjoy them in person. It's a nice balance. So, um, uh, yeah, but the, just watching lectures and taking notes and stuff, I just leave that to do, do that at home on Zoom. And I, I enjoy that a lot. Oh, also, too, the professors, they're always, I forgot this other part of the question, the professors are always available. Like, you can email them, that you can ask some questions in the discussion board. Uh, so they're always readily available to you. And so you don't ever have to worry about not, um, not um, finding out information. And then there's one more question that popped up in the chat. How many days are gross anatomy labs? Um, typically, it's, it just depends on the week. Um, we had uh, two, uh, we've, the past, so we, we had two labs last week. This week we have four, next week we have two. Um, so it's just, it just depends. It depends on like the unit and the week. Um, the MSK unit, which is musculoskeletal unit, that one has tons of labs because obviously there's so much to learn. But the uh, other units, there might be only three. So it just, it depends. Yeah, so that's pretty consistent. Um, when we had our, um, they're in musculoskeletal unit right now, the M1s. So when we had our MSK, you have about 10 labs in the first month. Um, and then it kind of gets more spaced out as you go through your systems. So our curriculum at Wayne State is systems-based. There's been some questions about um, curriculum in our previously submitted questions. So um, just to kind of go back to that, we have, it's kind of like two passes. Your first year, you, your pass is normal anatomy, normal physiology um, through each system. So you start with foundations and then musculoskeletal, cardio palm, um, endocrine reproductive, gastrointestinal, renal UT, you go through them all. And then in second year, you go through them a second time, but it's all pathophysiology, pathogenesis of disease, all of the abnormals. So it's really nice now as a second year because we're kind of reviewing normal as we learn abnormal. Um, so it's actually really a great way to kind of review as we go into step and into dedicated, like we're already doing a lot of the review that we've done before. Um, so yeah, there's 10 gross anatomy labs in the first month, but then as you space out, you know, cardio palm, there's less, it's dense anatomy, but there's less actual gross labs to do. So they space it out over the time. So now it's two or three a week, but then later on in the year, it'll be maybe only one. It just kind of depends on the unit and what's going on at school. Um, and then the next question that I want to talk about is clinical experience. So um, for Matthew, um, how much clinical experience do M1s receive in year one? And then we can expand this um, so we can talk about CEC too, if you guys want. I can answer this question. Um, so for M1, I don't know if this has changed, so please correct me if it has changed for you guys, but we, um, we have both an outreach and a clinical requirement. Um, for the clinical stuff, um, we get sorted into different placements, so I got sorted into Make Your Day, and that's why I continued volunteering with it. Um, so this was maybe my second week of school, actually, when I first began with them, so very early on. Um, and then after you fulfill your required 
hours, which is really not a lot. It's up to you um, if you want to continue seeking out additional clinical experiences. And if you do decide to do that, there's so much you can choose from. Um, there's all this uh, student run clinics um, like street medicine that we already talked about before. There's like vision clinics. There's um, more student run clinics that are in different parts of Detroit. There are some outside of Detroit that you can commute to. Um, so it's really up to you and what you're interested in. So make your day is more focused, for example, on um, like OB-GYN or pediatric or women's health. Um, and if your interest is more in vision, you would do something like that. And then um, second year, you begin something called the um, CEC, which um, Claire just talked about. And then for this, you also get placed into a clinic, but this is more, um, I'd say it's like pre-rotation. So you're in this clinic every other week and you're there for, I think, four hours. Um, you get to rank where you would like to see yourself based on your location and also what you're interested in. So this year I'm in a pediatric clinic at Henry Ford in Dearborn, which is nice because I live in Dearborn and I'm also interested in pediatrics. Um, and then for this, I would go to um, the clinic on the day I'm assigned to. For me, it's Wednesday afternoons. And then whatever is scheduled for the day, I shadow the doctor that um, was assigned to me. Um, he lets me do, um, also shadow other professionals in the area, so MA, so I get to do the vitals. Um, I also got trained on the medical record at Henry Ford. Um, and then you get to ask your questions. And then through the entire clinical experience, you also have the online um, class that goes with it. And then this online class has different assignments. So one of our more recent assignments, for example, we were at our clinics and we were supposed to ask different professionals um, what they do to make the whole cohesive like medical system work. So I got to speak to people at the front desk, people at the pharmacy, people who work with social worker, uh, the social work aspect. Um, so it's really cool because for most schools, you begin your clinical experiences third year onward with your rotations. But at Wayne State, not only do you get assigned to places, so you're guaranteed experience early on, but you also have so many options to also follow up with if you are interested in um, going above that. Yeah, and um, something I just want to mention really quickly is they don't just throw you out there um, first year. So we have a course called Cato Clinical Skills. Um, and at Clinical Skills, the Clinical Skills Center, we work with standardized patients to practice those um, patient encounters. And you get to practice doing vitals so that when you get out to street med on your first day of volunteering and you hold a blood pressure cup, you're not totally just like, how does this work? Um, so you get that practice, um, and that practice does, as I was saying before, correlates with your unit. So our last unit was GI for the M2s. So we did an abdominal physical exam, and our patient complaint was nausea. So a lot of it is correlating with um, what you're doing so that it, it kind of comes together and synthesizes. We usually do them at the end of the unit as well so that you can kind of formulate a differential diagnosis and and it's not just like coming out of nowhere. Um, so before we volunteer at any like Wayne affiliated clinic, we have to do two Cato sessions. So you have to practice before you get out there. And then once you start doing your clinical um, outreach or volunteering, you can do as much or as little as you'd like. Um, and it looks different for different people. So I really liked doing health fairs. I did a ton of BPs. I loved taking blood pressure. I thought it was so much fun. Um, other people rather do, you know, other kinds of clinical outreach. Um, so it just kind of depends on the person. And we have like 17 student run clinics. So there's really like a plethora of opportunity when we're out in the community, obviously not right now, but um, right now we're doing a lot of virtual telemedicine check-ins and stuff like that. So we're still active and um, involved but it's from a more um, telehealth perspective, which is good to learn um, going into the future. Um, so the next question is from Sean um, about electives. So how do the electives work? Are they built into the normal course of study or is there time set aside? So to answer that question, Yes, they are in addition to the normal course of study. You don't get time set aside for it, but I think there are about four or five electives. There's the research one, there's the medical education, community engagement, and then there's one called medical polit political action, I think. And if it's something that you're really passionate about, I don't feel like it's that much more time. I think it's really worth it 
and I do enjoy it. And it's especially it's pretty helpful for me. For example, I'm doing research, and they do teach you like how to make diagrams, how to make graphs, how to write literature. So I think it's really worth it. But it is um, in addition to your coursework; it's not time set aside. Yeah, and then for the time that you put in additional to your coursework in the first two years, um, there is an option in your fourth year to take a month. Um, if you do, excuse me, if you do the electives your first two years, then there's an option to take a month off in your fourth year, either to work on residency applications or something like that. So it's not like you're just putting in extra time. Um, I'm in the community engagement elective. I love it. I think that it's a great time being able to um, do more community service than I would if I was just in service learning because all students are involved in service learning. But I like having the extra push of um, being active in the community. Um, and then I'm seeing a lot of questions about like living and housing. So um, one question um, is commuting to Wayne a viable option if your home is 25 to 30 minutes away? Then the other one is uh, cost of housing, ease of finding housing, and distance to campus. Um, yeah, so I, like I said, I went, I commuted to Wayne State as an undergrad. I'm still commuting to Wayne State Medical School. I find it, it's really a viable option. Um, I, I enjoy, like, I need to have my family near me. I need the normalcy. And that really helped, I feel, in this transition to medical school. And, but I know so many people that also commute back and forth. It's just really, it, it's, if you live, like, 20, 30 minutes away, that's a totally fine option. Um, but, again, it's, it's more like a personal thing. So if you feel like you'll do better at home then stay at home don't worry about it like it's it's you can definitely do it great um and then from rachel how is your work-life balance and how many hours a day do you average studying a lot i can go well, for me, it's funny because I actually just picked up a part-time job. So <laughs> I feel like I can balance studying and working. I work like two days a week. It's only like four or six to six hours per shift or whatever. But like, like I was telling you guys earlier, studying, I kind of set my schedule on Sunday. I know like, okay, which days I want to do which lectures to review. And then um, I kind of go from there. It's some days where I'm just, I'm over it and I don't want to study. And I try not to have too many of those days, but I use the, the weekend to make those days up. So, but I'll say on average, I study at least six, six hours a day at least. And I try to study at least every day, at least read or review something every day. What about an M2? Typical day in the life. Um, I'd say that my my day to day schedule really differs. But one thing with Wayne not having required lectures and also because of COVID, I can kind of just plan my own days for the most part. Sometimes we'll have like a Zoom call a week or two of them a week. Um, so usually I like to wake up. Um, I like to work out a bit and then like walk my dogs and then I'll probably try to study. Like I might, I might be sitting at my computer for let's say eight hours in total of a day, but the amount of that actually spent studying is, it's maybe like a, two thirds of that, maybe like, you know, things happen. Um, and then, yeah, I'd, I'd say it's probably like five to six, like Ariel was saying, but it really, really depend on like where in the unit I am. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I think it also depends what unit you're in. Um, how I studied for musculoskeletal first year because it was so heavy in anatomy is very different than how you study for cardiopalm second year. Um, and I think a lot of us, I, I think every M2 probably has changed their study strategy at least once in medical school, maybe more. Um, and I definitely have. I started out as a note taker, like paper pencil, every lecture I was at school, even though um, our lectures aren't required for attendance. Um, I went in person um, 
and then I rewrote my notes. And about three months later, I realized that my hand was going to explode if I kept trying to write that much information. So um, that's when I made some investments in some technology. Um, I got an iPad. I'm not saying you need one, but it's probably one of my best investments um, because I can annotate the notes. I'm not like killing 300 trees trying to keep up with printing. Um, and so that's kind of something that a change that I made. Um, and just in terms of like day to day, I think for me, it works really well to work nine to five. Um, I love feeling like I have some semblance of normalcy and a routine. So I wake up, like Roxanne said, I'm wake up morning exercise, love to go for a run when it's like dark out. Um, and then get started on my day, work until about six, and then watch sports is pretty typical. Um, and then our next question is from Amberly. Does Wayne State implement small learning groups or teams as a part of the curriculum? If anyone wants to talk about like learning communities, anatomy lab groups. Um, yeah, well, as um, we do, we have, uh, we they usually split us up into a colored learning community. I think there's about like six colors. Um, and then they divide that learning community up into your anatomy groups. And your anatomy groups are like six people. And these people are like also in my histology. Uh, we have a histology class, so we work together. So I, we, they're my histology group. They're my service le learning groups. Like they really, you get to know like a really a good, like a six people, like there's six people in the group and you get to really know them well. See so like Ariel, she's my lab partner. She's in my histology class. So I always see her. Um, but it's really nice, especially I feel like during COVID, just to know some people really well and to know that you can rely on someone there. And, you know, I, I really enjoy I enjoyed um, having that close group of people with me um, and being able to rely on them. But there's also, you know, you're not just with that group either. There's so many ways to meet other people. There's people from the other learning communities, like other blue groups. There's events for your learning community. You're going to be able to meet anyone you want. You're not just stuck with that group. But it's, it's really good to have a close connection with people. Yeah, it's a really tiered system here at Wayne. So you have your small groups that are groups of six. And even within that, they split you into groups of three for histology and for um, anatomy later on. So, um, and I think it, it's different this year, but that's how it was for us. And um, then on top of that, you know, you have your learning community color, but that's not really like restrictive to the people that you see. Um, and we have, you know, pharmacovigilance sessions, which are like the two tables around us, so about 18 people. It just kind of depends. And then in Cato, you get to work with a ton of different students. You know, you're, you're usually partnered with another student um, to kind of give some peer feedback on your clinical skills. So there's a ton of different opportunities for um, meeting people and also for building community. I know that there's uh, definitely concern about competition versus collaboration in medical school. Wayne is 100% a collaborative environment. There is like in within my anatomy group, there was n never any feeling of competition of, you know, we're competing for spots in residency. Like it was collaboration and friendship. Um, you are going through it together. It's four years of medical school. Four years is a long time. Better make some friends, you know? So I think Wayne State does a really good job of providing those opportunities and those outlets for you to connect and just build your own support system. Um, also, I'm sorry, I answered a question in the chat, but I don't know if it's sent or not about adjusting to the weather in the Midwest. Um, basically what I said is you just have to make it through one winter. Once you make it through the winter, you can make it through anything. You could move to Alaska. Um, you'll be a pro after one year. Um, just get the right equipment. You need a coat. You need an umbrella, you need a rain jacket. Um, Grace, I know you can probably talk about this too, coming from California, but it's, it's definitely an adjustment. But once, once you make the adjustment, I mean, millions of people live in the Midwest, you can do it. Yeah, when I first moved to Michigan, I lived in Grand Rapids, which is on the 
west side of Michigan and it snows a heck of a lot there like a lot like the day I had to take my SAT I got 24 inches of snow which was a nightmare but coming to like the east side to Detroit it doesn't actually snow that much and even in Ann Arbor which is just a little bit west of Detroit it doesn't snow that much compared to Grand Rapids so don't worry too much about the snow and I think after one year you'll be fine Um, okay, one another question that I missed is the percentage of students that stay in Detroit to practice. Um, Wayne is the largest um, like physician base or like graduates of like Michigan providers. I did not say that well. The majority of <laughs> I don't know how to say this well, but there's a lot of Wayne State graduates that stay in Michigan. However, that does not mean that you have to stay in Michigan, and that does not mean that you will stay in Michigan. But if you want to, it's available. Um, yeah. I don't know the exact percentage. I think one of the statistics is that 40% of physicians in the state of Michigan have received some sort of training at Wayne State. So whether it be through the med school or through a residency or fellowship. Thank you. Um, uh, the match rate in Canada, that is something you should consult admissions with. Um, I don't have the exact numbers on that. Um, and then, oh, this question from Mary, um, for anyone to answer, do you all know what you wanna specialize in? Did you have an idea going in and has it changed since you started med school? Um, for me, I think I had no idea coming in what I wanted to do. And I think I keep getting swayed by whatever I'm doing at the moment. So with my first year, because I was doing Make Your Day, I was like swayed that way. And now that I'm at pediatrics, I was swayed that way. And I, I'm sure when rotations start, I'll actually find my true love. Um, but the great thing is that you have, through the interest groups and through the um, volunteer activities, you have so many chances to try new things. Um, but yes, I do not know what I want to go into. I didn't know coming in. A lot of people do and build their um, career that way in school, but I think it's okay if you don't. I would add that I'm kind of the opposite. Like I know what I wanted to do when coming in and like the various experiences I've, I've had have just confirmed my interest. I'm interested in neurosurgery <laughs> and like being in an anatomy lab, I'm like, oh yeah, I definitely want to be a surgical specialty. So, but it's definitely okay to change. It's definitely okay to explore your interests. I'm trying to keep an open mind. I'm just so set on neurosurgery right now, but I'm going to try my best to, you know, put my best effort towards other specialty interests. <laughs> You did get a question in the chat, Ariel, about neurosurgery. Um, they just wanted to know a little bit more about the interest group. Um, I think we could expand this to all of the specialty interest groups of, you know, are they student run? Is there a practicing physician involved? And are there mentorship opportunities? So specifically for a neurosurgery interest group, it is student run. Um, we do weekly book clubs or journal clubs where we pick like a interesting neurosurgical article and we dissect it. Um, we have residents come from like Henry Ford and they come and meet with us and just kind of give us their perspective on getting into a neurosurgical residency and their journey through med school. And then as far as mentorship, that is definitely available. I was able to gain mentorship through the neurosurgery interest group. So yeah, that opportunity is available. Is anyone else involved? Oh yeah, Roxanne. Oh, sorry. So um, back to the question on if you knew what you were going to go into. So I came in to uh, Wayne knowing I wanted to do emergency medicine. Um, scribes in an ER, I know it's like sounds so basic, but it really made me want to do emergency medicine. And there is actually a very large percent. I think it's like in the top three of like MASH specialties from Wayne. Um, and then because of that, I've also, I'm not on the board, but I have been to a lot of the emergency medicine interest group events. And so it is student run. We, um, they do a lot of talks with not only um, Wayne EM residents, like Wayne grads who are EM residents, but also from residency directors. Like for example, there are like, I think seven emergency medicine specialties just in the Metro Detroit, or residencies, just in the uh, Metro Detroit area. So they have a lot of connections to all the residency directors. And they also have like skills nights. And this isn't 
just only to like only specific to Wayne or to EM. Like I've been to an OB gin um, skills night and just they do little activities. But yeah, it's um, it is student run and there are a lot of connections to uh, different um, people in this field. Sure. Um, so like I said before, I'm in the military, so my interests are definitely more for um, a more active specialty. I really like emergency, um, and I'm really interested in um, that side of medicine. Um, the possibility of being like the GMO, general medical officer, um, is really appealing to me for a year or two um, in my training. Um, so I know mine will look very different um, because of the different opportunities that I'll have. Um, but yeah, I think emergency medicine is awesome. It might change four more times. I wanted to be a pediatrician like three months ago. So <laughs> you never know. Um, and then I saw another question about um, the gyms. So gyms opened in Michigan last Wednesday. So just to preface all of this, but is there a gym that we have access to as students? And then do any of you use it? So we have a gym at school. Um, it's the undergrad gym. And then we also have one in the School of Medicine, but I don't believe that that one is open yet. Um, it's in like the basement by, um, it has, um, the School of Medicine gym has treadmills, ellipticals, like the bikes, and a weight rack. Um, and then the undergrad gym is the, like, believe they have an indoor track and volleyball courts and everything. I'd kind of preference the one at the Wayne School is more of a fitness room. It's just like a small room that you can, it's actually open 24-7 when the building is open 24-7, um, that you can go to at any time. So I've gone, like, after anatomy lab or just, like, when I've been bored and just like from studying and need like a, just a quick break. But the, I would really recommend the undergrad gym, which is including your tuition. It has like a climbing wall and has anything you could possibly need. The one of the med school is a little small. <laughs> yeah, it's nice when you're studying and you just need a break to kind of like hop on a treadmill. Um, and then if you want to get in like a really good workout, feel like you can't walk the next day, the undergrad gym. Um, and um, so we're going to start wrapping up with a couple last questions. Um, yeah, thanks. Rachel in the chat, um, Rachel Seveny put in our rec center website link. Um, so we're going to start wrapping up with a couple of last questions um, to kind of close out our time. It went so fast. Time flies when you're having fun. Um, First question for all of our panelists is, if you could go back, would you have changed anything you did prior to starting medical school? Heavy. Um, I can go. For me, I would say no. I know during my gap year, I took two gap years and then I did post back, and I was kind of like, I did medical assistant, I did scribing, and I was just, okay, I want to get in med school. What else should I do? And when I got in post back, it kind of everything like came to fruition. And I just realized I was right where I should be. And I feel like post back really helped me prepare for medical school, learning how to study, getting my schedule together. And I just honestly don't think I would change too much about my journey. And I think my journey is what makes it so special and which makes me more appreciative to be here now. I think the biggest thing I learned in applying um, is to apply early. Um, don't be scared if you don't have your MCAT score back to submit your application because I waited for mine and it ended up backfiring a little bit um, and I didn't get any really notice from schools until like late fall. Um, and so I would really recommend the first day that it opens to submit your application submit it. If you don't know your score, submit it to five schools and then submit to more later. Um, because I didn't know how much that would affect my timeline. 
um, just by applying a little bit later in the summer. Um, Cause I still applied in the summer. It just wasn't, you know, June 1st or however, whatever the first day is. Um, so that's my biggest like tip to change is if obviously, you know, we're in the fall and if you haven't applied yet, like the next cycle is probably your best bet. Um, but apply early and um, update often. If something changes, if you wanna add on another school, don't be afraid, cast a wide net. Um, and that would be really helpful. And then our last question before we wrap up today is um, are there any tips or recommendations that you would have liked to know before or when entering medical school or in medical school? I think the biggest thing would be op being open to change. Um, I, was, I guess I was going to kind of go off of what my uh, answer would be to the previous question. And if I was telling myself from the beginning, really just um, like accept that things can take time. I was also three years out of undergrad. Um, yeah, I was also three out, years out of undergrad, took more time. And a lot of it had to do with doing things too early. And so I don't regret going through and taking the extra time to do the master's, which really helped me and having a year scribing, just like having that year just in the clinical setting, which I didn't really get to do in undergrad, really helped me. And I've noticed, I've noticed it help a lot. Um, beyond that, um, I, yeah, I, w I wish I was a little bit more open to change. I, I kind of came in thinking I knew exactly how I was going to study. And like Claire's mentioned, it's going to change. Um, I was very adamant about certain things like I wasn't an, an iPad person and I used to like uh, print out all my notes and write on all of them and I don't know I, I wish that I came in just with a clear mind. Yeah and um, just to close this out thanks for sharing Roxanne and um, thank you to all of our panelists today um, for sharing your advice and your stories. Um, I think that had I known something like this existed as a pre-med student, this would have been really helpful for me to hear the stories of current students. Um, and so that's our goal. If you have any feedback, um, the email for the ambassadors is in the chat um, from Wayne State School of Medicine. Um, so please email us um, so that we can better, um, better help you. Um, that's what this is for. That's our purpose. And so um, let us know how we're doing. We're, we love feedback. Um, <laughs> so with that, um, I just want to say have a great rest of your week, great rest of your day. And, um, yeah, have a good one. Thanks for joining us.